Welcome back to looking at crack climbing techniques around your house. So in part one, we looked at some of the thinner sizes and in part two, we're gonna be looking at some of the wider techniques. Chimneys, off with squeeze chimneys, all these wider varieties of crack climbing that you can find, let's go. Now we've looked at uh, fist jams in between the washing machine and we've used those appliances in the kitchen to their fullest. Then we can move on to the living room. And what I like to do in the living room is um, move on to more off-widthing type techniques. So here we're moving up from fist jams and we're starting into hand-hand off -width. So stacking our hands together, a butterfly jam, technically. Uh, and where I like to practice this is this gap just under the sofa here. Perfect butterfly jam, hands underneath, in that stacking position. We obviously can't move from here, we're not going to do any movement. Just work, work the jam and strengthen the jam and I just like to do little, little lifts. When you're doing your lifts and you want to add some weight, it's really important to make sure you start light. So start with cushions and then we can really start to up the game. So now we can start to add a little bit more weight, we're a little bit more warmed up and I just have these 5 kilo uh, dumbbell weights, place them on top, into your stacking position, keep squeezing, just keep going, reps for endurance and then we can add more weight if you really want to strengthen the jam. When you want to strengthen the hand jam then you can get your housemate or a friend or somebody who you're self-isolating with, they can stand on the sofa and then again really looking at one or two rep max here because it's going to be reasonably heavy. Just really go for it. Oh. Definitely a little bit more tricky. So after we have looked at stacking techniques, we move on to sort of the arm barring territory. Now where I like to practice this is outside and I like to do arm bar lifts. I haven't really got many places inside where I can practice my arm barring. It's where I come, come up onto the decking bench over and then arm barring technique and then we're just lifting and holding in that arm barring position and again we're gonna have weight or oh. just alter the lever system a little bit we can come in from this side and then obviously we have the weight for the, the length of the bench and that again becomes oh. a little bit more tricky Really pushing the armbar down. Oh yeah, I can feel it. I'm looking at chicken wings, slightly larger size than the armbar. And again, I like to come outside for this. I don't really have any place in my house to do that. But what I like to do is the chicken wing ladder lift. Looking at our chicken wing off with technique and how to do it here. So elbow in, palm against the side. Elbow in, palm against the side. We're just lifting that ladder. Ladder, and then lowering. And then lifting again. And then lowering and resting. And then lifting one more time. And then resting. And a, re a really good way to make this a little bit more difficult, because it can be quite easy just doing a ladder lift. What you can do is you can get a housemate or your partner to stand or hang on the end of the ladder depending on how high you can lift it. Obviously you need two housemates to do this or else it can be unbalanced at the end of the ladder. Get them to stand on the end and then lift. It can be pretty tricky so if you have kids or a small infant get them on the end, get them lying down, hang off the end and then lift with those on first. Next we move on to squeeze chimneys. The characteristics of squeeze chimneys are if we have a look in here you can see very tight. So what I like to do sort of emulate this. We're not practicing the techniques but we're practicing how we might feel in a squeeze chimney. I like to sort of find small places around the house, put my body inside of there and stay in there for as long as possible basically. This is where I kind of train so I find a little gap in the house, in the corner of the house. Took myself inside, I closed myself off from the rest of the world. I'll have my stopwatch in here and I'll just be doing reps like you would normally on the fingerboard doing your seven threes we might increase that a little bit and we might sort of say like okay I'll do one minute on so you're staying for one minute get yourself out because it's quite claustrophobic 30 seconds out and then one minute in shut yourself off 30 seconds out and then as you get better you can increase it to two minutes three minutes and somebody who's really good and done it quite a lot they'll be spending hours in there like hours of the day and that really gets you prepared for the squeeze chimneys. I like to actually do max reps, literally go in there, 
and I will just see how long I can stay in there, you know, really maxing it out. I'll try this now and then I'll come back to you later. I've been in here for, uh, you know, five or six hours now, really sort of testing the claustrophobia really. As it gets darker and darker, I mean, some people might be a little bit scared of the dark, so you could take a, a head torch in with you or something, but for the moment, it's uh, I still have a little bit of light. Um, I can just keep going for, for, for the next few hours really. But as you uh, progress through the hours, you might get hungry or thirsty, so it's useful to be prepared in these types of situations. So what I tend to do is I'll bring some sort of uh, jet boil and I take that in with me and then I can literally just start brewing up inside or you know take some dried food with you, add some water and you're not going to get hungry or thirsty basically so just being prepared whilst you're in these confined spaces is reasonably important. If you are sort of afraid of confined spaces another good tip is to do short bursts of light you do the opposite of, of your 7-3 dead hangs so you might go three seconds of light and then seven seconds off, really focusing in the short bursts of light and uh, making yourself feel safe in the, in the confined spaces. So it is time to come out now, folks. I'm pretty happy with that. New personal best. Been in there for just over 24 hours and keen to show you the next sizes. We're looking at chimney techniques and where better to practice chimney techniques than the chimney. We'll be looking at sort of the back and footing techniques um, and this is like a perfect place uh, to be able to practice this. What I tend to do is just placing yourself in there. You can actually start quite low down and just using that chimney technique with the back and footing. Until you reach the top, so cool. After the chimneys here, uh, we're looking at stemming. So focusing in on those stemming techniques and here outside between the walls and the uh, the outhouse we have perfect stemming corners this is what I like to use it has a little bit of a rough landing I quite often you know like to get a pad out you can make yourself safe and then you can really focus in on the techniques any sort of bouldering landings I like to give it a good test first. Just testing the landing and then potentially testing from a little bit higher. Landing's good on the edge but obviously we have a rough area underneath so we want to test on that. And that's pretty good. Palming and stemming is really all about friction. And when we're talking about friction, we also need to make sure holes are clean, nicely chalked, um, and everything's in good condition. What I like to do before I start out here is you know, really just focusing in on those dirty areas and giving it a really good clean of all the little flake bits of rock, any bits of lichen. And then what we're looking for is like little micro scoops. So we'll put your hands um, and your fingertips and your feet. In here we're, we're just looking for these little, these sort of like little indentations here and give them a little bit of a chalk, a little bit of a markup, rub it in. And then over here on, on this side, perfect little scoop here. So get that chalked. And uh, what the boulders tend to do, just mark it up so we can see where we're going. There's one there. And then if we look for our feet down here, some good ones there. And then here, look, oh, look at that right cheeky little edge. Get a little on that. Yeah, I think now we're ready to go. What I like to do as well when we're um, stemming is actually just chalk the palms into the corner onto our tick marks. There, see? Perfect palm. Moving on from the stemming, we're looking at wider bridging. So that could, could mean body bridging or just stemming out but in a chimney feature. So for this, we have the alleyway, perfect. Two walls either side and we can stem our way up. Again, probably the pad is quite nice. We've got a little bit of height here. We're just looking for that bridging technique. Bridging. Well, some people can maybe get a little bit scared to manage this. 
is like fool yourself. Uh, to fool yourself that it's not as high. What I like to do when I'm having a panic day, you swap it into the chimney, and then what we can do, we might get another bouldering pad here. That protects you for this bit. Another bouldering pad. So a bouldering pad to keep us safe for the first bit. Up into our bridging position. And then as it starts getting a little bit high, traverse over your second bouldering pad and it's like magic, like the ground is just there. Finish off and then if you place the pad correctly underneath you can actually have double pad landing so it makes you feel good and it's safer. So that's it, that was the full tour from small to large around the house all these variety of places that you can find cracks. If you like the video give us a like, don't forget to subscribe as well. Thank you very much for watching.